Hello everyone, my name is Harry Baldock, editor here at Total Telecom, and today I'm excited to be joined by a very special guest, Dr. Lee Sangchul, former CEO of LGU Plus and former Information and Communications Minister for South Korea. Dr. Lee, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you very much for inviting me. Right, you're, you're welcome. You've had a long and, and varied career in the South Korean telecoms industry. You've seen the transitions from different generations of technology, from 2G to 3G, 3G to 4G, and now 4G to 5G. How would you describe South Korea's 5G development so far? And would you agree with the statement that it is the most advanced 5G market in the world? Well, Korea is, uh, has a very advanced market for 5G, yes. Uh, but uh, I would say no, if you ask uh, whether that's a really advanced and fully grown 5G market. Because um, uh, first, we have over 10 million subscribers out of 50, over 50 million uh, populations. And uh, the output from 4G went up to around 37%. And uh, around 40% of 5G users are enjoying AR and VR. Uh, so I would say, yes, uh, we have uh, entered the, uh, the uh, entry of the 5G market successfully. That's what I could say. But um, no, because uh, it's just a, a entry of the 5G market. It's not even advanced, not even fully grown. I would say it's just 10% uh, of the total 5G market we are in. So you mentioned there that uh, 5G has quite a large adoption rate in, in South Korea especially compared to European markets, for example. What, what do you think it is about South Korea that makes it such a good environment for the development of 5G? Well, Korea has, uh, Korean people do have very good experience when it comes to uh, uh, digital technologies or success in IT, you know. Uh, year 2000 and 2001, we, uh, launched uh, broadband and uh, you know in just one year 10 million households <laughs> were using broadband in Korea which was even the number was by far the biggest you know mm. and uh, right now over 10 hundred percent people are using uh, broadband service now for 4G as you know uh, we launched uh, 4G you know, world first, and we have done many uh, successful, you know, uh, advancement in 4G. And uh, people, uh, I would say, very much accustomed to accept new technologies like uh, broadband, 3G, 4G, CDMA, you know. Uh, if you ask Korean people, what is the CDMA? They can tell you what it is, you know. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, I would say that that's the kind of environment that, uh, you know, Korean people accept 5G very naturally and they adapt to our new technologies easily. Given your background as a national communications minister, I'd like to talk for a moment about government policies surrounding the new technology. Do you think the government is doing well when it comes to 5G? And what would you like to see done differently? Well, Government has played a very much a key role, I would say, in uh, developing uh, new IT digital technologies. Uh, as I said, this broadband was a government-driven thing, and uh, CDMA was the government who played a key role there. And uh, but from 4G, well, industries like uh, operators like uh, LG U Plus started it even before the government pushed, pushed us, you know. And for 5G, uh, I think government is expe expecting that uh, 5G would uh, very important uh, element of uh, Industry 4.0. Uh, they expect uh, 5G will bring a new era of uh, digital transformations, which will give a uh, great uh, benefit to industries and uh, it will advance uh, digital economy 
far more than before. So uh, uh, government, the reason government is pushing industries and operators who are having 5G earlier and uh, you know um, broader and things like that. That's I think uh, they expect uh, some new uh, benefits coming along with the 5G. So I would say government is playing very good role. Not the key role now, but, uh, uh, but they are playing very good role, and uh, they sort of uh, encourage operators and encourage people uh, to uh, develop 5, 5G faster and earlier. You mentioned 5G and kind of unlocking Industry 4.0 there. I know obviously this is a, a very exciting time for both the operators and the industrial players. But what are the operators in, in Korea doing to really encourage industry collaboration involving 5G? Well, uh, as you know, consumers are using, uh, uh, say, uh, AR and VR and new services like that. And uh, people begin to see the uh, unseen things, you know. They begin to experience uh, that unexperienced things before, you know. So it's a totally new experience. Uh, always, when you provide people new things, new experience, and new benefits, then they become very successful. And this is the case. 5G is. Uh, beginning to provide the new experience, new benefits, but not yet. It is uh, fully grown, as I said. And um, especially industries, they begin to realize that uh, uh, they could uh, uh, grow that the output, say 50% or two times, three times more, even with less resources, which means uh, uh, new digital technologies replaces resources. They begin to realize that uh, through means of not just 5G, but um, edge computing, AI, and IoTs, and cloud, and, th and big data, and things like that. So uh, it's just blooming now, you know, and industries, they begin to realize that this is just to start and uh, something new and uh, better and uh, bigger things are coming with less resources. So uh, once they realize it, you know, government even operator don't have to push them what to do. They will just realize it and they just go into that. And within three to five years, uh, B2B area is much bigger than B2C area. You know, so. I guess my final question for you is what lessons can operators in other markets learn about 5G from those in South Korea? When we are talking about 5G, the most frequent question I get is that when can I, when can I get my investment back? What is ROI, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, this telecom business is different from uh, manufacturing business. It's not just a uh, one year investment and you get it back in that year, you know? So it's different. Once you invest, then the return comes very slowly for a couple of years. And then from third year, it grows like this. And in uh, five, six, seven years, uh, it gives you double the size of, of your investment. So you have to understand that. So. Uh, you have once you have uh, uh, confidence, then you have to go ahead and invest. And second thing is, do it earlier than others. There are many benefits if you do it earlier because uh, uh, whatever it is, you have uh, early adapters. About five to seven percent of the whole uh, users are early adapters, uh, and they come in anyway. You know. And when you start earlier, then you get that, that first fruit, you know, first benefit. And uh, when you, uh, the beginning, 
the output, I mean, the uh, price plan is higher than later. You know, later you have to lower the uh, price plan a little bit, but in the beginning it is higher. So you can enjoy that too. And uh, your brand name goes up very high you know, if you start it earlier. So I would say uh, you have to start it earlier than your competitors. And third thing is um, uh, don't just copy other services because um, you have to uh, push it in the market and get the uh, feedback from the consumers or customers and then you change it a little bit and provide the new services. You have to go through that feedback iterations two or three times. Then you will find your own service not somebody else's service. You have to find your own service. So once you do that and provide the new service with AR and VR and provide the new values to people, then you will be successful. The value I'm saying is that uh, uh, for 5G is quite different. The, two, the value of 2G was uh, uh, mobility. You, you can move around. 3G was the uh, uh, mobile internet, you know, you go into the network, you know, which was great value too. Value of 4G was not just a, a speed, but the video. Video was great value. Now you could enjoy video. Everything is uh, video these days. YouTube and, you know, uh, even uh, social media, all video things. But the, the value of 5G is even more advanced than it's not just a uh, video, but it gives you actually the solutions, the right information, the right time. It gives you a value because um, uh, if you use uh, edge computing, AI and IoT and cloud and big data, all along, I would say 5G is not network anymore. 5G is a big system that will provide you the real real-time value to the right people. So uh, if you realize the, the value of the people, then you will have a very successful 5G system. Dr. Lee, it's been really fascinating talking to you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much.